Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time coming along, welcome aboard. Hopefully you're going to hit that subscribe button. Really enjoy the content and see more of this kind of stuff in future. You need to make sure that you do. If this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. I don't really know what's wrong with you, but since you're back here, welcome back in any case. Let me apologise in advance if there is any kind of weird noises in the background. I live in the world's noisiest house with my uh, brother-in-law being only 10 years old. He likes to shout at his games the entire time. So we may pick up on some of that in the background. Apologies if that does happen. The idea here is to give you a good introduction to Blue Eyes as a deck rather than the individual card itself, one that I'm pretty sure you're familiar with. We will cover a little bit of the backstory on it and uh, some more information as I'm sure you're willing to listen and learn whilst you're here, but the intention of today's video is just to give you a solid idea of how to play the deck or at least be a little bit better equipped to defeat it if it comes up. So again, you're not going to walk away an expert, but you will walk away an expert at least in the basics, I should hope. Blue Eyes, White Dragon. A monster card which is completely inseparable from people's first thoughts of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, the classic cards, and so on and so forth. People who know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise at all will usually name the cards they do know as being Blue Eyes, White Dragon, Red Eyes, Dark Magician, Exodia, and the Egyptian God cards. These all bleed across from the casual fan base to competitive players, collectors, and just fans of the TV series itself. Blue Eyes White Dragon goes right the way back to the pre-Konami days. It's something we've seen in almost every iteration of Yu-Gi-Oh! brand from Season Zero. For those of you who haven't seen it, it's really, really cool and you should definitely check that one out. Up to the first packs that we saw in the long-forgotten Upper Deck Entertainment days with the Legend of Blue Eyes booster packs and the Kaiba Starter Deck and so, so much more. From the moment when we saw Kaiba lust after and practically steal before, spoiler alert, just kidding, it's been decades now, destroying the card so it can never be used against him, Blue Eyes White Dragon has been a symbol and an icon associated with the villainous, and even occasionally anti-hero-esque, Seto Kaiba, but even more so a sign of absolute power, only topped by the likes of Exodia and the Egyptian God cards. For those of us who are more familiar with the game and series, our perception of what Blue Eyes White Dragon is has changed over the years, but this nostalgic feeling will likely never dwindle away. What Blue Eyes has evolved into from the card game's point of view is a whole archetype, centred around this behemoth that we've all come to know and love, or potentially even fear. Over the years, Blue Eyes as the deck itself is commonly referred to, has garnered plenty of support, both good and bad, but its most explicit support, rather than indirect, has come via the Eyes of Blue series of cards. We've seen the deck get support through structured decks, booster packs and all kinds of other products. But in today's video we'll be primarily focusing on the Blue Eyes deck variants you could try out and discuss the cards that are considered to be the more competitively viable ones. Over the years, the deck has seen a variety of success, usually on a more casual level, but it has seen some regional level success and the like. However, its greatest success came, of course, when it was piloted to a World Championship victory in 2016 by Hiyama Shunsuke. So what is it that makes Blue Eyes so popular and how is it played? Much of this I would say has been outlined so far. Blue Eyes White Dragon itself is an iconic card, and as someone who has literally hundreds of copies of it in a collection I've been building up over the time, I know just how popular this card is, and as discussed before, the popularity extends from the most casual to the most competitive fans of the game. Even if it's not the most competitive option, one could choose for the modern era. Blue Eyes as a deck will often aim to combine elements of both a beatdown and control strategy, usually destroying opponent's cards and leveraging the huge bodies it gets on board to push for large amounts of damage as and when gaps open up in the opponent's strategy. People will often aim to go second with Blue Eyes variants, with the intention being to break the opponent's board and leave the opponent to the dust when they plough through like a bull in a china shop, or the Incredible Hulk through Black Widow. The deck does usually employ both direct support via the Eyes of Blue cards or Blue Eyes variant cards, as well as generic Chaos, Ritual and Dragon support, depending on the variant of the deck that's being used. With all decks, they have their weaknesses. 
The main downsides of how this deck is played is usually that it gives way to the opponent going first, which in the modern game can be a crucial place to yield to the opponent, as well as having a large number of high level monsters that will commonly be referred to as being bricks a term used in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community to imply a card is useless or difficult to make use of in most situations, resulting in a bricked hand, one that can't really be used particularly well. Next up we're going to do a rundown of the Blue Eyes cards you could, and should, consider using at this time in order to support your strategy. We'll be starting off with monsters, moving on to the extra deck, then spells and traps, before finally moving on to the indirect support options for the deck. I'll be going through cards that are largely relevant from a competitive point of view. It's worth noting that there are significantly more support cards out that we won't be covering here, but again, I just really don't want to overload you with information that you frankly don't need. I'm sure my omission of some of the more classic options may upset some viewers, but tough titties, if you can't handle the truth, then this channel is definitely not for you. I'll be reading the effects in a somewhat shortened manner in order to keep the video timed down. However, to offset this, I'll be showing the cards on the screen for your perusal, but given that you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, we know you probably won't be reading a fucking thing. So we start off with Blue Eyes White Dragon. Okay, so this one doesn't actually have anything for me to read to you, because it's just a vanilla, so here's the flavour text instead. This legendary dragon is a powerful engine of destruction, virtually invincible... <laughs> Very few have faced this awesome creature and lived to tell the tale. Well, it's not entirely accurate, but it does sound pretty cool. Following on from that, we have Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon. It can't be normal summoned or set. It must first be special summoned from the hand by revealing a copy of Blue Eyes White Dragon in your hand, and you can only special summon one of it this way per turn. Its name becomes Blue Eyes White Dragon whilst it's on the field or in the graveyard. Once per turn, you can target and destroy an opponent's monster, but it can't attack during that turn. Next up, we move on to Dragon Spirit of White. It's always treated as a Blue Eyes card. It's also always treated as a normal monster while it's in the hand or in the graveyard. When it's summoned, you can target and banish an opponent's spell or trap. If your opponent controls a monster, quick effect, you can tribute this card to special summon a Blue Eyes White Dragon from your hand. Next up, we have the White Stone of Ancients. Once per turn, during the end phase, if it's in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can special summon a Blue Eyes monster from your deck. You can banish it from the graveyard, then add a Blue Eyes monster from your graveyard to your hand. This effect is a hard once per turn. We also have the White Stone of Legend. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can add a copy of Blue Eyes White Dragon from your deck to your hand. We also have Maiden with Eyes of Blue. When a card or effect targets this card, Quick effect, you can special summon a Blue Eyes White Dragon from your hand, deck, or graveyard. When it's targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack and change the battle position of this card, and then you can special summon a Blue Eyes from your hand, deck, or graveyard. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. Master with Eyes of Blue. When it's normal summoned, you can add one level 1, Light Tuner, from your graveyard to your hand. You can shuffle this card from the graveyard into the deck, Target an effect monster you control, send it to the graveyard, then special summon a blue eyes monster from your graveyard other than the sent monster. This effect is a hard once per turn. We also have Sage with Eyes of Blue. When it's normal summoned, you can add a level 1 light tuner from your deck to your hand, except another copy of Sage. You can discard this card, target an effect monster you control, send it to the graveyard, then special summon a blue eyes monster from your deck. This effect is a hard once per turn. Next up, we have Priestess with Eyes of Blue. When a card or effect targets this card, quick effect, you can send one effect monster you control to the graveyard and add up to two blue eyes monsters with different names from your deck to your hand. If it's in your graveyard, you can target a blue eyes monster you control, shuffle it into the deck, and if you do, special summon this card. You can only use one effect per turn, and only once that turn. Protector with eyes of blue. When it's normal summoned, you can special summon a level 1 light tuner from your hand. You can target and send an effect monster you control to the graveyard to special summon a blue eyes monster from your hand. This effect is a hard once per turn. Next up we have blue eyes chaos max dragon. You can ritual summon it using chaos form. It must be ritual summoned. It can't be targeted by or destroyed by opponent's card effects. If it attacks a defense position monster, it inflicts double piercing damage. And lastly, we have Blue Eyes Chaos Dragon. You can ritual summon it, also using Chaos Form. It must also be ritual summoned. 
It can't be targeted by or destroyed by opponent's card effects. If it's ritual summoned using blue eyes white dragon, when it declares an attack you can change the battle positions of as many of your opponent's monsters as possible and if you do, the attack and defense of those monsters turns to zero. Also this turn, it inflicts piercing battle damage. Most commonly blue eyes white dragon itself and alternative C play as three ofs. We usually see a copy or two played of dragon with the spirit of white, Sage with Eyes of Blue and the White Stone of Ancients is usually played at 1-3 to three copies depending on the format and the build. The Ritual Variants are usually only played in builds dedicated to a Ritual version of the deck as a whole and their numbers depend on the build itself. And largely, the remaining monsters mentioned here see little to no play. For the next part we'll be looking at some of the in archetype options for Blue Eyes. We start off with Blue Eyes Twin Burst Dragon which requires two copies of Blue Eyes White Dragon as material. It must be either fusion summoned or special summoned by sending two copies of Blue Eyes White Dragon you control to the graveyard, in which case no poly is needed. It can't be destroyed by battle. It can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. At the end of the damage step, if this card attacked a monster and it isn't destroyed by battle, you can banish that monster. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Okay, fine. I had to mention this one. Sure, it's not super usable of its own accord, but it can come into play with the next monster. Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. These names just get more and more weird as we go along, as you'll see. It requires three copies of Blue Eyes White Dragon as material. At the end of the damage step, if this is the only face-up card you control and it has attacked, you can send a Blue Eyes Fusion from your extra deck to the graveyard, then it can attack again in a row. This effect can be used up to twice per turn, that is a hard per turn. During either player's turn when a card or effect targets a blue eyes monster or monsters you control, you can banish this from the graveyard to negate and destroy that card. Blue eyes alternative ultimate dragon. Your opponent can't target or destroy it with card effects. Once per turn you can pop a card your opponent controls, however, if it was fusion summoned using a blue eyes alternative as material, you can target up to three cards and pop those instead of the one. Although it can't attack during the turn you use this effect. Azure Eyes Silver Dragon. Okay, it's not really a blue eyes card, but it kind of belongs here. It requires a tuner plus one plus non-tuner normal monsters. If it's special summoned until the end of the next turn, neither player can target or destroy dragons you control with card effects. And then once per turn during your standby phase, you can special summon a normal monster from your graveyard. After that, we have Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. It requires a tuner plus one or more non-tuner Blue Eyes monsters. Neither player can special summon two or more monsters at the same time. Once per turn during either player's turn, when the effect of a card in the graveyard is activated, you can negate the activation. During either player's turn, you can tribute this Synchro Summon card to Special Summon a Light Dragon-type Synchro from your extra deck in Defense Mode, except another copy of Spirit, but then you destroy it during the end phase. Most of these extra deck monsters see some degree of play, varying from build to build. Much of the direct blue eyes, spells, and traps do not see play in the modern game, however we'll cover a few that are much more likely to at least see some experimental play, and we'll cover some of the more commonly associated non-archetype support cards here too, for simplicity. We start off with Bingo Machine Go. Reveal three cards from your deck that each meets at least one of the below criteria. Your opponent then randomly adds one card to your hand and the rest are shuffled into your deck. You can only activate one Bingo Machine per turn. The criteria is Blue Eyes Monster, Spell or trap that specifically lists Blue Eyes White Dragon or Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, except for another copy of Bingo Machine. We also have Destined Rivals. If you control a Blue Eyes or a Dark Magician, negate all your opponent's face-up monster effects until the end of the turn. This card is a hard one per turn. After that we have the Ultimate Creature of Destruction. Target a blue eyes monster you control, this turn it's unaffected by card effects except its own, and it can't be destroyed by battle. Also, any monster it battles is destroyed at the end of the damage step. Whilst this card is in your graveyard, if you summon a blue eyes white dragon, you can set this card but then banish it when it leaves the field. This effect is a hard one per turn. 
For this last part we'll discuss some of the cards and engines you could consider using depending on your particular build. This list isn't exhaustive but could give you some ideas of where to start. Generic Dragon Support This one goes without saying I believe. There's an absolute ton of generic dragon support cards that you can consider using. Along with warriors this is the most supported monster type so you really do have the luxury of a seemingly infinite pool of cards to consider. Chaos Support Most of the blue eye support is light attribute, however with a small splash of dark support, for example any of the generic Chaos Dragons, the newer Chaos cards and even the likes of a Danger Package, you can easily add another dynamic to this deck according to your taste. And the last notable mention here is Ritual Support. If you're pressing ahead with a Ritual variant, usually to abuse Chaos Max, then you'll want to supplement this with a wide array of options that are open to Ritual decks as a whole. Cards such as Manju, Pre-Preparation of Rites and more in order to add a huge boost to your consistency and much, much more. And for this final part of the video we're going to be looking at some sample deck lists you could give a glance over for you to build from. It's worth noting that these decks will not have been tested extensively, but you can try them out, see what works well and get rid of anything you frankly just don't like. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.